Miren. What's up everybody, this is Scott and welcome back to another video. In today's video I'm going to do a bit of a refresh on a video I made about 532 days ago to be exact. That's oddly specific. It's almost like I went back and rewatched the video. Hmm. Anyway, in today's video I'm going to talk about Google Photos versus Google Drive and some of the different things that you can do with either or both. So for the majority of this video you're not going to get to see this smiling face, mostly because I want to walk through exactly how you do things on an Android device which should be really similar to that of an iPhone and also how you do it via the web. So the first question that we ask ourselves is what truly is the difference between Google Photos and Google Drive? And now this is something that I had in my last video but I've updated it. So in Google Photos you can search for people, dates, places, and things. You can actually use emojis to search for those types of things as well, which is really interesting and I don't use it ever. Which, hey, six of one, half dozen of the other. You can make albums, share photos with contacts. Uh, they do have a really cool sharing feature which I'll probably do in a separate video. In addition, you can make magic with editing photos. But the big takeaway here, in order to get that free storage space, you want to make sure that you select high quality to get the unlimited storage and we will talk about how to do that just in a second. Fast forwarding over to Google Drive you can make photos, you can store your photos, you do have the ability to upload directly to it which again that's something that we talked about right there in the middle with the ability to upload and also delete and sync across those devices. You can create folders and organize your photos within Drive and you can upload directly there, but keep in mind when you upload directly to Drive, it counts as storage space. So that goes into the one of the very first questions and almost the most common question is, how can I store my own personal photos for free on Google Photos? So if you go to photos.google.com, you can actually swipe in there from the left side and go down to the settings menu. And when you go to that settings menu right there in the middle, you will see high quality unlimited storage. Make sure that when you do that you have it selected. That's how you do it online. Going into the Android app itself, one of the ways you can do it, open the Photos app, swipe in from the left side, go all the way down to the settings that you see in the bottom there, and make sure that when you hit backup and sync, and this is where I've protected my email address, right in the middle you will see backup and sync. For most of those folks that don't have a pixel, it's going to give you the options just like you saw on the web high quality which is the free or the original which is the not free that will count against your storage and again one of the most common questions that I've ever been asked related to my original video how on earth do I free up my space I want to transfer all my photos to that free high quality how in the world do I do that Google has a really nice setting if you go to photos.google.com swipe in from that left side and go to the settings menu. Within that settings menu right below the options of the high quality option or the original size to the right you will see something that says recover storage. What it does is all the photos that count against your quota, the ones that are uploaded not in the high quality, it's going to move those to the high quality version. And when I mean move those to the high quality version I mean it's going to compress them down to where it's that original high quality. These are not the original size. If you need the original size this is not something that you want to do. If you don't really care or it doesn't really matter the high quality still is very, very good high quality photos. How many times can I say high quality? The photos themselves in the high quality mode are going to be good enough for almost everyone's usage. Again, if you're making huge size posters, this is probably not something that you want to do. Another really common question that I hear all the time is, what happens when I delete a photo in Drive and then in Photos? So I'm going to talk about both examples. So when I'm in the Photos app itself, I'm going to select a picture to randomly delete and I'm going to delete it. And as you see at the bottom, it's going to say, do you want to remove this across all sync devices? When you delete it, and this isn't a copy that you have locally on your phone, it's completely gone. It removes itself from photos. It removes itself from drive. It removes itself from anywhere that picture exists. Same kind of concept when you go online. I'm going to select a random picture, go to my trash can icon, and you can see this is going to remove that photo from the Google account, Google Drive, and all sync folders and devices related to that Google account. However, there's one thing that I want to note. If you by chance accidentally delete one and you did not want to do that, you can actually go find those photos in the trash can. In that trash can, those photos will stay there for about 60 days 
and then they will delete themselves permanently. So if you accidentally mess up and delete something, you can find it and restore it from the trash can. Now, when I go into Google Drive, I'll notice that I have a Google Photos folder, which is something that I like to have. Those are everything that's backed up from the Google Photos app. When I go into a particular month, because they are sorted by month, I'm going to highlight a photo and I'm going to delete it. I'm going to get a very similar message to that of which you see in Google Photos. If I remove this screenshot and move it to the trash, it's going to delete from all devices. Same 60-day concept applies. If you accidentally delete it, go check your trash can and be able to restore those photos from there. Now, what happens if I upload directly through Google Drive and not Google Photos? Every single time that you upload directly to Google Drive, it will count against your storage. The only way to get the free storage for the high quality is to use the Google Photos app or photos.google.com. Any, 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 any and all photos that are uploaded directly to Google Drive will count against your storage. Now here's a new one that I've heard recently. I want to delete some of my photos from the Photos app, but not from Google Drive. What can I do? Well, Google Photos has this archive feature. When you select the photo, you can say, hey, I just want it to disappear from my Google Photos feed, therefore I'm going to archive it. This does not delete the photo, it still maintains that same storage within Google Drive, and it's located in an archive folder in Google Photos. It just does not appear on your main photo stream at photos.google.com. Now, how do I create folders and move them around in Google Drive? One thing I want to be very clear about is when you create folders in Google Drive, those do not translate over to Google Photos. So maybe you have this really cool family vacation and you're trying to create a folder that says family vacation folder, something like that. You can do that in Google Drive, but the best recommendation is you want to create an album in Google Photos. So think album in Google Photos is equivalent to folder in Google Drive. That's kind of how they have those laid out. So I talked about albums a lot, but now I want to show you how to create an album in Google Photos. Just in case you don't need a folder and you want to share all the photos from perhaps a recently attended bachelor party that you went to, you would want to highlight the photos themselves within the app and you can do the same thing online or inside the app on an Android or iPhone device. In the upper part of the screen, you'll see a plus. When you press that plus inside the app, you'll get the ability to create an album, a shared album, so on and so forth. So I want to create an album. Once I get all those photos inside there, I'm going to give it some sweet, sweet name called Awesome. And at that point, I have now created all of the photos within that album to share across any device that I choose. Much like the app itself I talked about, select the photos that you'd like, go to the upper part of the screen, hit the plus sign that you see in the upper right, and at that point, you can then say, create that album. Once you create that album and call it Sweet, Sweet Album, just because I'm not original. So there you go, that's the updated version from my original video 532 days ago about Google Drive versus Google Photos. If you guys have any questions at all, you can go watch the original. I will link it in the description below and probably put it up in a card for you guys to watch. If nothing makes sense, watch this video and that video. And if you still have questions, reach out to me. I'll be more than happy to help as much as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching and liking our videos, subscribing, leaving comments. We love it. Our live shows at 7.30 on Fridays and we have a podcast now. The podcast address is thetechspeaks.podbean.com. I'll leave all that information in the description below just in case you guys would like to check it out. As always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below, and I'll see you guys next time.